So what we've got here is the new router from Sky. It's the one they give you if you sign up now for their broadband package. Existing customers, I believe, were charged, or still are charged, £59.99 for this. And I have to say, it is the biggest piece of crap, as far as routers are concerned, that I've had on the bench for a long time. Now what I've actually done to uh, compare how good the signal is on this thing, I could not get a signal at all into my workshop, so I placed this Sky router next to my Superhub 2 from Virgin, which I haven't modified at all, it's a brilliant router straight out of the box, and I made sure there weren't conflicting channels, I actually set the Sky 1 to channel 1 and the um, Virgin 1 to uh, channel 12, and I put them side by side and I had to uh, take a couple of screen grabs um, some shots on how they perform with each other and as you can see in the shots this is extremely pathetic now those screen grabs were taken in the next room it wasn't as if uh, I have a big house um, my house does have some uh, brick walls it's an older house so it's uh, made of solid brick walls and um, what have you and there's quite a bit of metal in the walls but even so it shouldn't be that poor and I already knew how poor this was before I actually picked this one up off eBay because my eldest daughter has Sky in her house and her house is just a two bedroom house it's a modern house just plasterboard walls uh, nothing to uh, interrupt a signal from room to room at all and she's told me that uh, her connection drops out it's really really poor and again their box is uh, just in the next room now there are a couple of reasons why this might be so bad and one of the things what I've seen with this, I've seen some internal photos online it has this rather nifty idea of there's no wall wart or external power supply for this you just plug the uh, electricity supply, the cable straight into the back here but the biggest problem with that I've seen from internal photos is there's no shielding on that power supply in here at all now power supplies when they're not shielded they give out a lot of RF interference and that could be uh, one of the biggest problems with this router is the fact that they haven't bothered to shield the power supply at all because uh, one of the problems is, is it is a poor signal and it also drops out a hell of a lot um, it'll just disappear altogether and then come back and it's probably down to the actual power supply itself so what I'm going to do is crack it open and uh, have a look inside and see if we can uh, shield that power supply see if that will improve anything better and then uh, we'll have a look at modifying the antennas so to get into this it's just a screw here at the back take that off and you can probably just see through these vents these clips that hold uh, this top part onto it and it's also quite funny that they've got this sticker on the front uh, this way up for best performance stand me up and keep me on all the time but uh, I don't think it would matter where you stuck this you'd still get poor performance so when you open the box this is your power supply here sitting on the top and it's got spacers lifting it off the main PCB board of the router itself but uh, just like I uh, suspected from the online photographs there's no shielding on this whatsoever so the power supply itself is just held on by these two pressure clips here you can just uh, get yourself some needle nose pliers and squeeze those in and lift it out and we've got an arrangement of uh, pins here that connect up to the actual power supply itself so once you get the board out the um, actual cables that connect to these two antennas by the way I was wrong about that PCB antenna is uh, it looks uh, quite thick LMR 100 cable it's uh, quite uh, heavy duty it's got a nice feel to it so I think that's uh, a quality cable but uh, what you've got here and it's supposed to stand that way up you've got uh, what look like two patch antennas and again they're grounded back on the loop so you've got uh, the main driven element which is soldered on here but uh, it's still connected back to what's probably the reflector and uh, you've got uh, it's a kind of a design reminds me of a patch antenna but uh, a badly designed patched antenna and you've got one here in the horizontal and you've got one in the vertical so you're supposed to keep it that way up so the good thing about this is what I can do you've got your two high rows connectors here so we can just disconnect the LMR cable here that feed in to the actual uh, chip 
that's under here that uh, performs all the Wi-Fi. I'm not sure what kind of chip it is on this, but uh, we can just take them off and we can desolder it off these antennas and uh, we can use this cable to either crimp on some reverse SMA connectors so we can add our own antennas or we can actually solder directly and uh, make dipole antennas that are connected directly to this cable but uh, if you check back my video on how to make dipole antennas um, it'll give you some ideas of uh, the which way you want to go with this now what I'm going to do I'm going to actually crimp these on to some uh, SMA connectors so we can add whatever antennas we want to to this uh, router to try and uh, improve its performance and also you, you can you can actually see how they've uh, produced this down to a price and save money as much as possible you've got some uh, tracks here that uh, whoever designed the board originally intended cans to be put over here and down here but uh, they've just left them bare and haven't bothered uh, any kind with any kind of shielding whatsoever and also you've got uh, PCB tracks here for a can to fit over the actual main chip down here but uh, obviously they haven't used that but uh, maybe in uh, testing they realised it uh, did get quite hot so they just stuck, stuck this heat sink directly on top of the chip there and now I've got these antennas off we can have a closer look and you can see here you've just got the centre driven element part of the coax soldered on here and it's up there and it folds down folds back on itself and you've got your shield soldered here so they're both connected together really really bad inefficient antenna here I would never make an antenna like that but um, again just bad design I just want to show you this coax like I said previously it's uh, a good quality coax I mean it's even got shielding um, around uh, in between the outer braid of the coax here and that center core of the coax so uh, really haven't spared any expense here with the coax it's just a shame it's connected to such a poor designed antenna so I've finished uh, with the actual coax cable now and I've crimped on a couple of uh, reverse SMA connectors here so we can add our own antennas to them now these um, SMA connectors they're designed for LMR195 I didn't have any for LMR100 but uh, I managed to crimp them on okay with some uh, heat shrink holding them in place so a little bit of work with the Dremel and I've drilled out two holes there so we can put our connectors through so what I've done I've made a shield out of some plastic and I've sandwiched in the middle some uh, copper tape it's uh, on a reel like this get it pretty cheap off eBay you also get it from garden centres they use it as a slug control so you can put it around your pots apparently but um, made this shield and I made sure that um, I've kind of left a gap so there's no chance of any because uh, it's 240 volts and I don't want it jumping across or anything like that so I want to keep it nice and safe so uh, that's the shield and it will go on the base here like so and then the power supply will sit on top of it and on the case here I've put a strip of copper that will just uh, sit on top and uh, sandwich it uh, together but before I do that I've also uh, connected the uh, reverse SMA connectors into the case here so we can add our uh, dipole antennas or whatever kind of antenna we want to add so just to see if this will make a difference I'm going to do a quick test now and see how powerful it is without any shielding on that power supply just to see if uh, my theory is correct and this does leak um, RF and uh, severely impact the performance of the router so quick test to see how it works without any shielding so here is the router again about uh, 45 meters away went through a couple of brick walls and we're getting a good signal this time don't get me wrong I mean we couldn't get a signal at all that's why I had to do screenshots before but just look at this signal now I've had it running for a while it's so intermittent and that is something that a lot of people complain about with this router it's always disconnecting and reconnecting so uh, we haven't got a solid line there at all and that's probably down to the RF of that power supply interfering with it so 
what I'll do is uh, I'll just uh, disconnect it now and I'll add the shielding that I've made and see if it makes uh, much of a difference see it's just disconnected again there so that's the shield in place and it's just being held down by the two pegs that hold the actual power supply in place and uh, like I said you've got the two pieces of plastic with the copper sandwiched in between and I've left this um, spark gap um, kind of thing around the sides just to make doubly sure that uh, we don't end up shorting something out but uh, unless you feel really confident about doing something like this just remember it's 240 volt we've got coming in here so that's the power supply snapped back into place and uh, it's holding this shield in there so uh, here's the outside of the case and I've just put some tape on the inside of uh, this plastic case here so hopefully it'll do a much better job at uh, shielding that RF so it is finished off with its dipole antennas in place so it uh, definitely looks the business now and just to remind ourselves what we've removed absolutely pathetic so now we've got that shielding in place let's uh, give it a test and see if we get a more stable signal so I've had it running for a minute here just to see if there's any dropouts and there's none whatsoever it's a big bright red signal no dropouts whatsoever so that shielding is doing its job and um, I knew from looking at the internal photos online before I actually got my hands on one of these what a poor design that was it uh, really is something that uh, should never have got past the, the design stage the mine production stage so uh, I mean unless you're really confident with electronics though um, it is 240 volts so just be careful but uh, it does make such a big difference nice strong signal now because we've got the dipole antennas and with that shielding in place there's no dropouts at all so if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you for the next one